In this unit of work, we will be looking at the sociology of crime and deviance. We will consider the role of crime in society and the sociological causes of crime. We will also look at the differences in criminality and victimhood between different groups, and evaluating crime control and prevention methods. Finally we will look at the impact of globalization, on patterns of crime and deviance. This learning phase is an introduction to the unit and will consider definitions of both concepts, and how they are a social construction. We will also look at non-sociological explanations of crime and deviance, you will not be examined on this, but it provides some background. The PowerPoint will not proceed automatically, you will need to click to move forward. This is so you can proceed at your own pace. The audio files will play automatically with each animation. When discussing this topic we need to make sure that we are clear on what we mean by crime and deviance. Crime is an act, or behavior, which goes against the laws of society. They are laws that are created by the government, and punishable by the criminal justice system. For example, it is a criminal act to steal, or to take things that don't belong to you. It is also a criminal act to not register your child's birth, whereas, deviance is defined as acts, or behaviors which go against the norms and values of society. These can also be crimes, but not always. For example, it is deviant to pick your nose in public, but you wouldn't get arrested for it. However, walking around naked in public would not only be considered deviant, but it would also get you arrested for indecent exposure. These might seem like very clear-cut definitions. However, these definitions are not universal. Because what is considered criminal or deviant, varies around the world. There are four ways that crime and deviance are considered to be a social construction. This means that they are not naturally occurring phenomena, but is instead created by individual societies. The first way that crime and deviance is a social construction, is because it is context-dependent. This means that behaviors that are acceptable in certain situations, would not be in others. For example, wearing a bikini or speedo at the beach is fine, but it would not be acceptable in the classroom. Secondly, it varies between cultures, meaning, what is considered acceptable, or rude varies depending on the culture, society, or country you are in. For example, in most parts of the world, the OK hand sign is acceptable. But in Brazil, this is considered vulgar and extremely rude. Historical relativity, refers to how criminal action, and deviant behavior changes over time. What was once acceptable may become illegal or deviant. And what was once deviant or illegal, may become acceptable. For example, in the Victorian era, opium was not only legal, but often given as a medicine without prescription. However, it is now a class A drug which carries a life prison sentence for dealing. Finally, generational variance, refers to how some behaviors are acceptable from certain age groups, but not others. For example, it would be considered deviant, for an 80-year-old to be clubbing. Additionally, the law places age restrictions, on certain products and activities. For example, you cannot buy alcohol in the UK, if you are under 18. One way that society tries to explain criminal and deviant behavior, is by looking at psychological issues. Remember you will not be examined on this but this will give you some background and alternative theories. The first theory is put forward by Bowlby. Bowlby suggests, one of the reasons why people commit crime, is due to maternal deprivation. This theory suggests that criminal behavior is linked to a lack of motherly love at a young age. Bowlby states that a strong, warm and healthy relationship with a mother figure, is necessary for good psychological development. Without this, children can become delinquents and suffer affectionless psychopathy, where they do not feel remorse. Secondly, is the tripartite personality theory. Freud put forward the idea that criminal behavior is caused by, an imbalance between the id, ego, and superego. The id is the part of the personality that is made up of basic urges, the superego is our morality. And the ego balances up the two. However, Freud states that when the ego doesn't work, and there is too much id, or too much superego it can lead to criminal and deviant behavior. Too much id can lead to impulsive, and aggressive behavior. Whereas, too much superego can lead to judgmental behavior and moral rigidity. Finally, there is the argument that those who commit crime, or act in a deviant manner, have some sort of mental abnormality or brain damage. 
Researchers have done PET scans and CAT scans on convicted criminals, and they found differences in their brain structures when compared to non-criminals. This could cause differences in behavior, such as more impulsivity and aggression. The psychological explanations can be criticized, because they are more theories than explanations. Not one of the explanations can be proven conclusively. And there are many exceptions to each theory. For example, Bolby states that it is a lack of maternal love which leads to deviance. However, many children who are raised by single fathers, other family members, or in care, do not go on to become criminals. This theory also places the blame for criminal behavior at the feet of mothers, rather than the individual themselves. Additionally, the tripartite personality cannot be proven to exist or not. So to use it as an explanation for criminal activity doesn't work, as it is an unprovable theory. And finally, the brain abnormality explanation can be criticized because it turns the criminals into victims. It suggests that they are not responsible for their actions and cannot be held accountable due to brain abnormalities which are not their fault. The biological explanations can be criticized, because they take responsibility away from the individual, suggesting that their behavior is not their fault and therefore, they should not be held responsible. Additionally, the genetic explanation can be criticized, because not everyone who has the mutation on the M, A, O, A, gene, goes on to commit crime. So there must be more than genetics that causes criminal behavior.